Hello, this is part B of the chapter 7 lesson. Uh, in this uh, part, we're going to talk about our second type of hypothesis test. And this is a type of test where we test a claim about a single population proportion. And it's going to be very similar to what we did in part A. The only difference is that now we're making a claim about a proportion rather than population mean. So our first example is example 7.5 out of the, of the textbook. Uh, in the year 2002, 75% of children across the U.S. aged 2 to 17 saw a dentist in the past year. Now, like all of us, where did this number 75% come from? Well, we won't get into that. We're just going to take this number for granted. Okay. Now, an investigator suspects that the percentage of children in the city of Boston who saw a dentist in the past year is different than 75%. And uh, so here we're dealing with uh, a population of children in Boston, and uh, we're making a claim about the percentage of them who saw a dentist in the past year. And we think it's different than, than the national average of 75%. Okay? And so the, the claim, or the research hypothesis, is that the percentage of children in Boston who saw a dentist in the past year is different than 75%. Now let's just make a note here that uh, this type of, of claim is very similar to what we saw in the previous uh, section or part A, but we're making a claim about a population proportion, not a population mean. We have one population and that's children in Boston. We're making a claim about that population, but the claim is with respect to a proportion and not a mean. So the, the test that we're going to do here is a little bit different than what we did in part A. Same basic step, same basic idea, but the calculations are going to be a little bit different. Okay. The first step in any hypothesis test is to define the parameter. So here we're making a claim about a population proportion, and so we're going to use the parameter P rather than mu. What is P? Well, it's the proportion of all children in Boston who saw a dentist in the past year. And again, when we define the parameter, we always want to use that word all to, to um, make it clear that we're making a claim about a large population and not just the, the few in a sample. Okay. So now we need to set up our hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is the statement of no change or no difference. And the alternative hypothesis is the, uh, is the investigator's claim. So if there were no difference between Boston and the rest of the United States, then P, our population proportion, would be equal to the proportion across the United States, which is 75%, or 0.75. And so the null hypothesis is going to be the claim that P equals 0.75. Now, the original claim was stated in terms of percentages, but remember whenever we do uh, mathematics with percentages, we always use their decimal equivalent. So we're going to use the decimal equivalent P equals 0.75 rather than 75 percent. Okay. Now the claim or the research hypothesis is that P is different than 0.75, and so our alternative hypothesis is going to be the statement that P is not equal to 0.75. Now in a claim about our um, about a population proportion, our null hypothesis is always going to be the statement that P equals some number. And the alternative hypothesis is going to be that P is not equal to 0.75, or excuse me, that P is not equal to that number, P is greater than that number, or P is less than that number. So same basic forms as in the claim about a population mean, but here we're dealing with a proportion rather than a mean. So this is going to be a two-tailed test because we have a not equal to sign in our alternative hypothesis. Okay. So now, in order to uh, determine if our claim is true with 100% certainty, we'd have to go out and survey every single child from Boston and, and calculate the proportion of those children that uh, have seen a dentist in the past year. That's impossible to do. So instead, we go out and we get data from a sample. In this case, we surveyed 125 children from Boston and found that 64% or 64 of them reported seeing a dentist in the past year. 
And so based off of this, we would calculate a sample proportion, p hat, same notation as what we used uh, in chapter 6. p hat is going to take the number of successes, or the number of children who saw a dentist in the past year, divided by our sample size, and we get 0.512. Okay. Now, this number here is obviously different than 0.75, and so our data appear to support the claim. They certainly don't prove the claim is true because remember that P hat, a sample proportion, is an estimate of a population proportion. So our data appear to support the claim, but they do not prove the claim is true. We want to determine just how strong that apparent support is, and the hypothesis test allows us to do that. And so the, the hypothesis test that we're using here is what's called the one proportion Z test. Called one proportion because our um, it's a test about a single population proportion. A Z test because our test statistic is a so-called Z score. And uh, like the previous lesson, we're not going to go into the details or the theoretical um, details of the calculation. You can read about that in, in the book. Um, we're just going to focus on understanding what it is we're doing and what it all means. And so to calculate the test statistic and the p-value, we're going to use the worksheet called Proportion in the workbook chapter 7. Uh, here are our hypotheses. Here's our, our sample proportion. And so we're going to enter that information into these yellow cells. p naught is the number that appears in the null hypothesis, 0.75 p hat, that's our sample proportion, n is our sample size, and then our number of tails is 2 because we have a not equal to sign in our alternative hypothesis. Here's our test statistic, and here's our p-value. Now, the p-value is calculated in a little bit different way than in, than in Part A uh, of, a, of, of the Chapter 7 lesson, but uh, its interpretation is the same. We could think of this p-value as the probability of uh, getting a sample proportion at least this large, uh, or at least this small in this case, assuming that the null hypothesis is a true statement. Okay. So our p-value here is zero. Now we're going to interpret that p-value in the same way as every as as the p-values in um, in the part A of this lesson. We're going to pair, compare that number to our significance level alpha, which is uh, by default 0.05. In this case, the p-value is less than 0.05. And so our conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So when we reject the null hypothesis, our conclusion is that the data support the claim or the research hypothesis. And so we could uh, interpret this by saying that the percentage of children in Boston who saw a dentist in the past year appears to be different than the 75 percent. Or stated another way, and I think this is the way that the book states it, is that there is a statistically significant difference in the proportion of children living in Boston who use dental services as compared to the national average or national proportion. So uh, our, our data and our sample proportion was much less than 0.75 or less than 75 percent. The data appeared to support the claim and our, alt, our hypothesis test concludes that, there, um, that the strength of that support is strong enough for us to conclude that the data do indeed support the claim. So I hope you see here that the, that the details of this type of test are a little bit different than what we saw in part A of the chapter 7 lesson but the basic idea is the same. Same basic steps, same basic terminology, uh, same basic uh, um, way of coming to the conclusion. Now um, let's talk a little bit more about this one proportion Z test that we just did. Uh, the proportion of this test, or the purpose of this test, is to test, a to test a claim about a proportion of a single population. Again, single here is the key word. Uh, later on, we're going to talk about a hypothesis test where we compare two different uh, populations. Uh, our requirements for this type of test is, number one, uh, that the sample is random. And um, that's always a requirement for these hypothesis tests. Uh, the second requirement is that the conditions for a binomial distribution are, are met. Remember, we talked about the binomial distribution in, in Chapter 5. 
A binomial distribution deals with the case where we have a bunch of trials. Every trial has one of two outcomes that we generically call success and failure. And, um, and then all the trials are independent. In this case, each child that we ask is a trial. They either have seen a dentist or they don't. We'll assume that they're independent. So those conditions for a binomial distribution are met. Now, a binomial distribution is important because the binomial distribution forms the theoretical foundation uh, for this type of test. Uh, the, the book talks a little bit about that. We won't go into that here. Uh, the third requirement is that the conditions n p naught greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p naught are greater than 5 are both met. Um, what this says in kind of um, in informal terms is that we've got to have a fairly large sample size in order to do this test. In this case, our, our samples needs to be at, at the very least 5, but probably much greater than 5. Okay. Uh, let's do one more example of this. Uh, this is example 7.4 from, from the textbook. So in 2002, the prevalence of cigarette smoking among adults was 21.1%. Uh, a researcher believes that the current percentage is lower. So our claim, or the research hypothesis, is that the current percentage of American adults who smoke is less than 21.1%. So our parameter, what it is we're making a claim about, is P, the current proportion of American adults who smoke. So now we need to set up our hypotheses. Remember, our null is the statement of no change or no difference. So if the proportion has not changed, then P would equal 0.211, the proportion from uh, 2002. And so our null hypothesis is the statement that P equals 0.211, or 21.1%. Now our claim is that P is less than uh, this, uh, per, this proportion of 0.211. So our alternative hypothesis is that P is less than 0.211. So we see that in this case we have a left-tailed test, or generically we have a one-tailed test. Now, to get our, from our, our sample data, we, uh, we talked to uh, 3,536 people, and asked each one of them, did, do you smoke or not? And 482 of them say that they do smoke. So our sample proportion is uh, 482 divided by 3536, which is about 13.6%. So this sample proportion is much less than 21.1%. So our data appear to support the claim. But just how much do they support it? Well, the, uh, the hypothesis test is going to determine that. So again, if we go to our worksheet uh, proportion, we enter our numbers. Here's P naught, the number in our null hypothesis. Here's our sample proportion. Here's our sample size. We have a one-tail test. Here's our test statistic. Here's our p-value. And again, we have a p-value of 0. So we're going to interpret that p-value just like the previous example. Compare that to the number 0.05. P-value is less than, than 0.05. And so our conclusion is that we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. And so we would say that our data support the claim, or stated in other terms, we would say that the percentage of current smokers appears to be less than 21.1%. So our data appeared to support the claim, and our hypothesis test tells us that the, the strength of that support is strong enough for us to conclude that the data do support the claim.